It's green for go. They're racing. He says go. He says Tara. And Tiger Tara rolls away from them on the home turn. Here comes another big boil over. Equine athleticism at its best. The king is in the castle once more. This is in one race. The rest are almost in another post. She is a star with a capital S. It's going to be a triple treat. A miracle three-peat. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed history here at Menangle. What about that? It's getting right up on the sprint lane and it's going to bolt in. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of the live show of the Sprint Lane podcast. Paul Cochran with you. I've got Jess Watkins, Freddie Hastings as always. Welcome, guys. Hey, Paul, G'day, Fred. Team. How are we? Good. Nice to know. This is the setup we wanted to show people last week, isn't it? And we couldn't get the picture out no. on the live stream. So <laughs> no, if you're on the live stream, this is kind of what we were doing. We're standing. It feels... Got such freedom, Jess. I know, nice and flexible. Can yep. move around, bit yep. of space, which is nice. Jess was getting a bit animated, doing a bit of a dance last <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah, I don't think people could have seen it. We should, <laughs> you know, we should have, um, you know, have played a bit later. No Use your hands and your feet when you're telling a story, <laughs> yes, Jess. That's yes, that's exactly right. So, uh, hey, it's been another big week. How's yours been, Jess? Yeah, it's been good. Got some downtime towards the end of last week following the carnival. But, yeah, no good. Feeling refreshed and ready to go for another big week. Yeah. How did it feel to be back on the... Back on the, the back on the tools, the yeah. Cans. Back on the tools, yeah, yeah. It was good. It was a good week. Um, uh, Penrith was very exciting racing once again. Uh, we saw Seaton Grimer and Joe Connolly uh, to the fore on Saturday uh, with their uh, treble, which is quite a, a terrific feat. And you know, he does a great job, Joe, when you consider that you know he's a detective in the police, uh, but still manages to find the time to to train a team of about ten horses and. I spoke to him on Sunday on, on the pace on radio in Sydney and he, he was very complimentary of the help he gets from young Seaton and they, they pretty much work as a really good team. And they've been together for several years now. He's stuck solid. He, he says he picks and sticks and he certainly does, Joe, and uh, Seaton's are reaping the benefits of that uh, you know, that partnership uh, with Joe. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll talk a little bit about Seaton a little bit uh, as we go through the show. Um, we had such a massive big Sydney carnival, like one of the... One of the most memorable, I think, on record. There was just storylines everywhere. We're about to go into something else. So it felt like the week just gone was a bit like what they call it the eye of the storm when you, you get in that comfort zone. You're not getting in that comfort zone, are you, Jess? Because there's, big, there's <laughs> no. big, big things to come. <laughs> That's we've got right. Bathurst. We've got Wagga. We've got APG um, finals. We've got, obviously got the, the TAB Regional Championships, which take in the whole state. So there is so much good stuff ahead. And then we eventually get to Trots New South Wales and... You know, and, and what happens there, and we get to, and then huh, it's July already by the time we get to that. But it doesn't stop. I mean, we've just got good stuff continually coming. That's right. And after those exciting races that you've just mentioned, of course, the Tab Eureka will be here in September. So it's just around yep. the corner as well. Yep. All right. Um, all right. Let's have a look at the racing week that was, hey. Um, Jess. You and I, we, we know what's coming, don't we? We know, the, the of course. Horse, the people's horse. We, it's just predictable. Let's, I'll tell you what, let's do it. They run the corner, 400 metres left to go. The leader is my ultimate Byron. Nowhere to go for Heaven on High. Double actors. Come on, Heaven on High. Come on, boy. Give it a cheer, Freddie. Jack Drive it home. There's a gap on the inside for Heaven on High, and he says, Go, boy. <laughs> down the outside, Lockheel and I'm Bruce Almighty coming with a big run. Heaven on High up on the inside goes to the lead. <sighs> on the outside, I'm Bruce Almighty. Look at that, Almighty. Freddie. The heart was pumping. Big fist high. pump when he crossed Heaven the line. I know I could see me thinking. Goodness. He's home and home. <laughs> well done, mate. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, it's good to you see you and all the owners and all the connections yeah. and um, you know to Thorny and to Jack Trainer and everyone involved. Um, what a moment for you! Yeah, it must have been a lot of fun. Real good horse he is. Like we, we've talked about it. You know, we've waxed lyrical about the the, the you know Porter Prince and what a good horse he's proven to be. They came over on the same flight back in August of last year. He's had five starts for us now. Heaven on high. He's won three. Uh, ran second in a heat of the carousel and third in the Group 2 final. Uh, uh, Brendan Mikulov does a good job with his uh, BPM Bloodstock team and that was a big group of happy owners. There's a, you know, over 20 of us, but we were just we're just loving the ride. He's in again on Saturday in a heat of the uh, the Autumn uh, uh, Championship and hopefully uh, he'll he'll measure up again. Much tougher draw. He's, he's drawn out in the car park. Uh, so he's got barrier. He'll come out of nine. Um but look, he's racing well. He went 150 and a quick. half. Yeah. 150 Very and a nice half. Time. Good time. Uh, that's his personal best uh, in terms of a mile. And uh, uh, what I liked is it was his first run back. He had a nice trial behind Better Eclipse, but, but it was his first run back since uh, the 1st of October. 
and he did have a little injury uh, around December when he came back in after a break. Uh, he had a, an issue with a tendon. He went out, not a, not a major issue, uh, had a bit more time out. So I thought first up, after you know something like five months off the scene, it was pretty good to see him back. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I thought it was super impressive, mate. I was sitting, I was watching from the couch. I thought it was, uh, I, I was really stoked for you. Really yeah, one of the there. first messages I got yeah. was from Paul, which was was, was what, lovely. But yeah. what I was uh, most impressed about, Jess, like heaven on high, might have been fast at one fifty. I think How fast Freddie, Freddie would have given him a, a run for his money getting <laughs> down from the I did the a quarter in twenty five, I reckon, getting down those. I almost pulled a hammy. I looked up to him and I said, "Are you going to come down?" And he was a bit hesitant, yeah. but then he made the mad dash and he made it down in time. Well, my thanks Sorry. to Mick Kokas because he was able to come out from the judges box to give all clear not only on course but down the line to uh, radio and tab so uh, I appreciated Mick's help just so I could get there but yeah I think I'd done a hemi coming uh, down the stairs um, <laughs> and I was a bit sore, sore by the end of the night. <laughs> uh, it was good mate it was good um, yeah re really happy for you. Now you mentioned Seton Grimer what mm. a week he's had. Yeah. Like he had a treble Incredible. at Menangle on Saturday. I, I'm Look, I, I can't be sure of this, but that would have to be one of his better nights at um, yeah, yeah. Metro Racing for That's sure. That's right. Yeah, I think uh, speaking to Joe, that was both Joe's and Seedon's first Metropolitan trebles, which was really impressive. But from Seedon's last 10 drives, he's actually driven seven winners. So mm, that stat mm. in itself is pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, he had winners everywhere. He had a winner at Bathurst on Wednesday. He, was, he had a winner at Penrith on Thursday as well. So um, I know from a fantasy points perspective, he was the second yeah. highest scorer of the whole game. And... Yeah, we can use that as a bit of a metric, I guess, that, you know, points points are allocated to, um, you know, to success. I think Tommy, um, Tom Swiderski said on our fantasy podcast yesterday, seven of his last 10 drives were winners. Yeah. What, a, what a strike rate. What he's doing really well now, I think, guys, is he's become a more patient driver. Seaton, when he first came on the scene, and, and I had a discussion with Joe about this on, on Sunday, when he started out, he was predominantly driving at Penrith, which is a track, it's a smaller track, you've got to be a little bit more aggressive. And I think Seaton then transitioned to driving at Menangle on the bigger track and was probably driving a little like he was driving at Penrith. But, but the big home straight takes no prisoners here. So you can't really be super duper aggressive like you might be at Penrith because you get to the top of the lane and you, you, you know, you're faint. Um, Seaton has learned so much in his time over the last year or so, uh, and one of the catalysts for that, according to Joe, is his partnership with Loyalist, who we saw notch up the second of those wins. Loyalist is proving to be a real good sit and sprint horse, and Joe felt that the association that Seaton has with Loyalist, it's it's sort of turned him around and become a more patient driver. And we saw that again with Jimmy Locke coming from well back. Yeah, yeah. his racing pattern loyalist is just incredible. Mm. The fact that he can come from so far back mm. and just dash home, even when they're running so quick, his sectionals, his last few starts when he gets home must be incredible. Yeah. He is really a star on the rise, I think, loyalist. Oh, I think so. And when you when you look, when he first came over the, from the ditch, he... he, he his first two races were at Penrith and he, he was driven up on the speed and he led and he won a heat and final there. Uh, but when he came to Menangle, they had to drive him a bit differently and that's where Seaton and this association now with his horse getting him to, to balance from back in the field to come home, that's really paying dividends for the connections, Joe and Seaton. The only downside of uh, Seaton driving Jimmy Locke to a win? We're a step further away from Jimmy Locke driving <laughs> Jimmy Locke. That's, that's the downside. Uh, look, speaking of blokes who, who just won everywhere during the week, Cameron Hart, um, again, he won races at Menangle. He won race Bathurst, Penrith, Goulburn yesterday. And he went to Young. Like, we know Jason Grimson loves the, you know, the, the fairy tale romance of winning there at Young. He did it last year. Well, he went back again. He took Sicario. That's two in a row for Sicario. Cameron took the drive and they walk away with the Young Cup again. So, yeah. Double and double fantasy points too, Jess. That's right. Very special for both of them. Of course, we know they're both Riverina boys, but Jason especially to go back to back mm. in his hometown cup. I'm sure that's something that would have meant a lot to him. It's what a lot of people strive to do, and he's been able to do it twice. Jack Callaghan had winners at Menangle, Penrith, and Newcastle. What about young Jack Chapel? Like he's, he's had a he's, good. Way. He's he's a he's doing he's really an well. Emerging talent, yes. isn't he? And you know, it's great to see that you know Bernie Hewitt Stables taking him under their wing, giving him bit of work, giving him more drives. I think we're going to see a bit more of Jack Chappell over the next few weeks with, you know, obviously the, the spotlight coming down on Penrith and the volume of racing, uh, not Penrith, Bathurst, Bathurst sorry, Jeff. Um, and the volume of racing that we're going to see there. So, yeah, he, he did really well. He, had, he drove a winner during the week. Um, speaking of Bernie, though, double at Bathurst ahead of the carnival. It feels like it's just warming up for Bernie. Like, it feels like he's on the precipice of really a fill-up. And maybe several times, given how often Bathurst are about to race, 
He has a great record at uh, at, at the uh, the Gold Crown Carnival, doesn't he, Bernie? And that's his backyard. And um, you know he's going to have a powerful team uh, coming up uh, over the next couple of days as he launches into the uh, the tiara and the crown. What about that stoush last Tuesday with Jewel Melody and Peaceful in the last race? Wasn't it a Tuesday afternoon cool, treat? It? It I was, think yeah. it was the race that we were all waiting to see. And Jewel Melody, she had to do it tough. She was not gifted that race at all. And I think she just proved too classy in the end and she was very impressive and I can't wait to see her at Bathurst. I was talking to Bernie in the stables um, before that race actually and he was sort of gearing her up and what a beautiful, beautiful specimen she is, Jewel Melody, and, and he loves her and he said, yeah, she's my favourite, you know, it, it means a lot. But he said, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. He said, I would have liked to have drawn better. It, he said, this draw doesn't feel ideal. He said, I don't think I've got the speed to take peaceful early. So I think with that in mind, he, tactically, he drove that one really well. Well, he controlled the race from the breeze, yeah. didn't he, really? Um, she's a very talented filly. And, I, I mean, I guess there were some shocks she didn't make the uh, yeah. the Oaks. Uh, she, she dropped out and it didn't qualify, but was clearly going to be better for the run. Uh, and back to a mile, it uh, ticked a lot of boxes. I on think there was a, probably a, almost a, a few. Yeah. She's yeah. back. Some you relief, know, the, yeah. The, you know, given given that she didn't deliver in the, in the heats of the Oaks and didn't didn't qualify for a race that we thought might have had her name on it yeah. in some respects. Um, for her to come out and sort of right those wrongs a little bit, it was, it was great. We love seeing emerging champions, you know, on, on our plate. And, you know, we, we know that at two and three-year-old, they can be great and then drop off quickly. We've seen that. Um, it was great to see Jewel Melody come out and take a big scalp in Peaceful, Jess. Yeah, definitely. And I think just as you touched on there in her Oaks heat, it's probably a bit of a, of a forgive over that longer trip, didn't suit her yeah. on, at that start, and she was it was hard for her as well. She lobbed outside the leader there, but definitely bounced back over the mile. She's quality. Good day at Goulburn yesterday? It was. Good racing. Um, yeah, good racing. A, a number of doubles were annexed by a variety of, of drivers along the way, and uh, Jason Hewitt had a good day at the office, so his very good uh, horse, Chiselled, yeah. uh, made a bit of a mess of them. It's very nice job, horse. It? Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a really nice horse. It ran some good races here around the carnival, um, Chiselled, and I was quite impressed with it last uh, well, yesterday afternoon. Uh, it certainly won at a, a good horse's price, uh, very short. I think it got as low as about a dollar ten and a dollar eight in fixed odds betting. Uh, Brad Hewitt, well, Brad just doing Brad things, wins another couple of races, and and so it went on. It was a really good day there. It always is. Good to see our, I guess, our A-listers there at a, you know, and Goulburn's only just down the road. Yeah. Um, you know, some traffic problems given that horrible accident here just on our doorstep here at Menangle um, yesterday, and our thoughts yeah. do go out to everyone. You know, all the connections of anyone involved in that it was just horrible to see seeing those pictures on the news last night but um yeah so an interrupted kind of race program still went ahead and yeah as you said good racing but it was great to see how a-listers get around on a monday at, a, at the golden track they often do paul yeah. like like you know lucky lodge you know generally take horses down i know um tian sutton normally takes a few horses down john ogden had horses there uh, but it's nothing unusual to see you know, some of the other big stables from up here, um, you know, head down there and race on a, on a Tuesday. Grant Forrest had a heap of horses in the trot. Uh, and, and it was good to see. I enjoyed seeing young Abby Sanderson drive a winner for Leon Jurd in the last race. She's a very, very talented young lady. Um, of course, uh, she, her parents are very proud of her. And, of course, uh, she got to drive in a group one here against her brother Ryan only a few weeks ago uh, in, in, a, in a derby final. So, look, she's a talent and it was good to see her combine with Leon to, to win, Jess. A, and another talent to come out of the mini trots as well. well of course, she raced in the mini trots nursery, here when they were based oh, at Menangle. So it, yeah. the, it just keeps producing. Yeah, it's a great nursery, the, the mini trot program. Um, look, we mentioned the Young Cup and well done to the Young Club for putting on a, a great night. We had Scotty Adams from the club on the show last week and he talked about what, what they're going to do. And my, my mail is from Brett Skelly, who was there um, on behalf of Harness Racing New South Wales, was that they over-delivered. It was, it was a brilliant night. He's talking to crowd somewhere around that 1600 mark, which wow. is great. Excellent. You know, for you know, a Friday night at Regional Racing in Young, they do get around it. The racing was certainly good to, good to see. Um, but Broken Hill had their, their uh, Carnival of Cups going on at, at the same time. So well done to Boris Devsic. We mentioned his name He's a few been times. getting a few mentions, a few Boris. Times. He's doing so well, yeah. He went out and won the, uh, the Rocky Baker Memorial Pacing Cup. Um, I do know that uh, So uh, Ken Brown and Adam Fairley from the Harness Racing New South Wales board were there. John Dumasy, our CEO, was there, and they gave a special presentation to, to Tracy from the club uh, as an uh, 
honour of her long, long serving commitment to keeping harness racing going in Broken Hill and delivering events and the service that her whole family gives. So, yeah, congratulations to Trace up there. Um, I mentioned last week they give away these push bikes as well. So Rocky Baker, it was something he he basically initiated going back 20-odd years ago and it's something that's been perpetuated um, by his son since Rocky's passing as well. Just a brilliant initiative. So you've got kids cruising around on push bikes as a result of harness racing everywhere in Broken Hill. It's, it's fantastic. Wonderful. Yeah, so really, really good initiative. We mentioned Trevor Allenby last week too. We said, oh, well done, Trevor. You've got your first win. Well, we stopped mentioning him after maybe two because we're about to say Trevor's just won his second race. Uh, yeah. So when it rains, it pours. <laughs> so that's, um, that's two, two in 2023. That's equal with his best season in, 20, uh, in, in 10 years. Wow, yeah. so but maybe two winners in the seat. Yeah, maybe. maybe so he's, he's on a, he's on on for a a, a, a third one and, yeah. and a personal best. There maybe you, you get a mention. You get a mention in the sprint lane, and it's a the winners keep on flowing. For, yeah. <laughs> so, but no, it's just been great racing all over the place for for the past week, hasn't it? It's been really good. Yeah, really exciting. And Broken Hill, I know it's a meeting that I always like to tune into on Sky Channel. The excitement there, the small track, it always delivers. So it was great to I, see. They got good feedback from everyone who, who was there saying they, they really put on a good show. The weather was amazing and the town got around it. And Yeah, so uh, it's great to see. And that's that's the beauty of the Carnival Cups program because it gets around the place. And not that many to go on the schedule, but uh, we move to Penrith, the next one. So Renshaw Cup. Week. Renshaw Cup. So always a big night there, even when it's not on the Carnival of Cups roster. So I'm looking yep. forward. I know they've got uh, some great entertainment lined up on the night. I was talking to Tash Greentree only last Thursday about uh, what they've got planned for uh, that night, and they've got a, a, a country a performer, a, a well awarded performer to come and uh, entertain the crowd. They've got market stalls. They've got things on for the kids. Um, going to be a huge night. Tash doing a special solo performance? I'm not sure. I, I, she might be the backing singer, yes. but uh, but it is. It's a <laughs> massive night. It's the Thursday before Easter, and that generally draws a crowd because yep. people then know that the next day is a public holiday and they, they can sort of you know stay a bit late. So it's always a big night. The, the race itself is always a crack of the Renshaw yeah. Cup. It yep. really is a, a good race. There's always excitement, um, and, and I look forward to it this yep. year. No, it should be good. So, yeah, Penrith's on, and, and then we've got Goulburn, we've got... Bankstown, obviously, with the Truro Memorial. Wagga with the regional championships. So the program, Coolerman and Narrabri, some of those ones um, still to come as well. So the the program is we're slowly getting through it, but uh, we're, we're certainly at the you know the turn for home, just like heaven on high. Jess. <laughs> and waiting for the run to come, and when it comes, you take <laughs> oh the <boy>. gap. <laughs> All right, Jess, brace yourself. Have you Jeff? bought a Boom Crash Opera yeah. CD yet, or, 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 or download it so you don't buy don't CDs anymore? Is. Do is you? Is that a band? Yeah, they're yep. a Boom Crash. Yeah. Oh. Yep. No. I turned it down a little bit this week. I because Thank you. I figured, well, even though you're not sitting on a chair, <laughs> <laughs> still my jump. She's still going to give you the eyes. <laughs> so the best thing you saw this week, guys. Well, who wants to go first? Freddie can go first. After. Oh, look, for me, I, I suppose it was heaven on high. Just coming yeah. back to the racetrack, big thrill. You know. It, it, you think, you know, a week before I'm calling a miracle mile and then at seven days later I'm calling heaven on high racing. For me, I tell you what, calling heaven on high winning was pretty <laughs> pretty damn special. So, um, yeah, it was good to see him back. And yeah. for me, I'm a proud Bankstown girl mm-hmm. and DJ Binskin here on Saturday night drove in his father's colours in, JE, in the J.E. Binskin free-for-all aboard David Aiken's horse, Cranbourne. So, Bankstown tyres through and through Absolutely. there. And it was just great to see so much history in those colours. Yeah, and for me, look, great to see the, the Carnival Cups programs delivering and those big crowds that we talked about. You know, to, to hear that we had such big numbers at Young, big numbers at, at Broken Hill, to know that harness racing is alive and well in these regional areas wonderful that's it's exactly what we want i mean it's great that we've got a heartbeat and a you know the best track and the best racing in the world right here where we're standing but it needs that that pulse in and around the state and mm. you know and to see people come along and have their family gatherings and community events because they do they you know they put the harness in harness racing in a way they harness yep. communities yep. these these events it's it's really really cool to see and i love that they've been getting around the merch too that you know the the, the idea that we had around the T-shirts and the hats and, you know, and stubby coolers and that, they've been really popular items. And to see them turn up in different towns and people, you know, having their drink out of the coolers or wearing the hat or wearing the T-shirts and, you know, really wanting to be part of that, it's, it's really cool. Stuff. Awesome. Yeah. All right.
we have got um, we've got a big um, as we know we just had the Sydney Carnival well and we've sort of alluded to it at the top of the show now we move into uh, Bathurst the Bathurst Gold Crown like always wonderful and it is elite 101 we've got Danny Dwyer from the Bathurst Club on the line g'day Danny hey Paul how you going mate good you got Fred and Jess here as well g'day Danny hi Danny Okay, now Jess, how are you? Yeah, we're Good, well. You. Uh, I'm sure you're well, but as we, we launch into another Gold Crown Carnival. Gold Crown 37, Fred, this time. It's all um, all going very well and all getting ready for it to kick off um, tomorrow night with the hoots of the Gold Tiara. So it's uh, yeah, all progressing um, very well so far. Mate, 12 races. It's a big card. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. It's surprised by the, um, not so much the numbers for tomorrow night around the Gold Tiara hoots, but certainly the honorary stakes hoots to pick up five hoots as well was very encouraging for the NR up to 60 and I think that shows that the number of visitors and the number of um, trainers that are coming up to compete in the, at the carnival are um, bringing along a, a stable mate as well with their with their younger runners and um, yeah, it all forms part of the carnival and uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to um, a big night tomorrow night. And the carnival's not just great racing on the track but also the atmosphere offered. I know the club puts on a number of social events throughout the fortnight. Can you tell us what they are and how that people are able to book for them? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. There's a lot of things on as well. It's trying to make it that carnival type atmosphere with people that do travel, yeah, you know, a long distance. And we do have a lot of people that actually come and stay for the ten days, and probably provides an opportunity for them to go to something other than the race meeting. So pretty much um, on the Wednesday, obviously we've got the uh, tiara heats, and then Thursday is a quieter day. Then we move into the crown heats on the Friday. But then on the Saturday we have the gold crown ball. So it's always a very popular event and something the club looks forward to each and every year. We've got a, a lot of girls there organising that for us this year. I'm sure it's going to be a, a great night. Those tickets are available on one, two, three ticks, and then we move over to Sunday, and uh, got 87 lots in the Gold Crown yearling sale. It starts at 12 o'clock, so it should be a great sale. It always is a, a very a very competitive sale, and there's always a great buyer to come out of the sale as well. And Then we move over to the Monday, and we'll obviously the race meeting with the heats of the chalice and the bracelet, move into the Calcutta, and the barrier draw on Monday night here at the club, which is always a very uh, great night as well, social night. I have a lot of fun with that. Tuesday is a free night. Then Wednesday we've come across to the ladies' night with the big um, with constellations there for the horses that failed to qualify for the, for the gold constellation on the, for, on the Saturday night, rather. We've got the silver constellation, bronze constellation, lady drivers race, a lot of things on that night as well. Thursday is the golf day. Friday is the honoree dinner. And uh, the Davis family from Spring Hill are our honorees this year, and they're a great family there. Horses carry the Studley uh, prefix, and they've been involved in the industry for a long time. And looking forward to hearing their story on the Friday night, and then obviously on the Saturday night, we've got the big four finals and uh, some great racing. So, yeah, a lot going on, but very excited for the next 10 days. You'll be getting out there and having a swing from the blue markers, mate. <laughs> yeah, certainly will. Yeah, no, it should be great. Really yeah, looking forward golf days are always having good. a bit of a hit. I'm just looking at the fields, Danny, um, you know, using tomorrow night as an example. It's a real who's who of, of um, New South Wales racing, but, you know, with a bit of um, interstate interest there as well. But do you get fantastic support for that carnival? I mean, 37 years, as you mentioned, but it just continues to grow in sort of the estimations of the, the, the racing community, not just in New South Wales, but, you know, around the, around the traps, you know, interstate as well. It's got a great reputation, you know, and that's testament yeah, to the definitely. work that you guys do at the club. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Yeah, it's a, a great opportunity that we still, um, you know, a lot of interstate um, trainers attending, and I think the increase in the prize money for the Crown and the Tiara to 150 is it's just strengthened that up a lot as well, and it's it's really good prize money early in the season. I think we've got um, fields for Friday haven't come out as yet, but tomorrow we've got I think about 18 first starters out of the 50 that are that are competing and. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, there's not that pressure on there where they have to have a start before the series to come, and um, it allows us that little bit more flexibility and takes a little bit of pressure off the trainers now that they can bring a first starter. Um, and anyone that's coming from interstate, there's not that pressure to have that first start as well. So I think that's helped enormously, and also the increase in prize money. The great thing, um, as, as can... the great thing, Fred. Sorry, Danny. The great thing, Fred, is yeah. that the local the opportunities for these really we you know Bath is such a, a nursery for you know the Hewitts the Turnbulls you know the, these these stables that churn out great horses and come to town here and do well this is in their own backyard where a great opportunity to earn big money and 
elite racing group one opportunities in their own backyard well we've seen bernie to the full last year and uh of course uh th there have been some visitors that have come along and won some of the features uh, the mcdowell's uh, brian portelli won a, a crown with tasty delight going back but but danny i just wanted to ask you you just spoke to jess and, and told us about all the events that you've got planned and the, the whole programming and all the rest of it but is it a little bit easier in 2023 because we don't have the spectre of the rotten COVID hanging over us where things were a little curtailed or at the very least some of the planning and preparation in the past year or two? Uh, has it been good being unencumbered and, and just planning a, a good carnival? Yeah, it certainly has been, Fred. And I think also there's a little bit of a slowness after COVID too with people coming back to the track. It didn't sort of come back as quickly as what we would have liked and also Sponsorship was a little bit hard to get to as well as businesses were sort of starting to get back on track after, you know, being in lockdown for so long. So, yeah, I think this year it's been, um, I think Marianne mentioned to me the other day that she nearly had every race sponsored probably two weeks before the carnival had started, which was, was fantastic, really, because, you know, I don't think we'd been able to achieve that previously for a number of years and coming out of COVID, it was even harder for, for a year or so. So, yeah, that's no, really looking forward. I think people are starting to now enjoy to come out. Um, and they're more comfortable, um, obviously, around the less restrictions on COVID. And, you know, we just learn to live with now, I guess. And, and so it's been a lot easier. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure we're going to have great crowds. And, and as you said, about the local interest, when there's always a local, a lot of local interest in the runners trained, trained in Bathurst or in the Western area. And that certainly just adds to that, you know, excitement of, you know, there might be three or four local train runners in those finals and people just embrace that and, and uh, have their full support when they're racing to, to hopefully get a local victory. Got any of your own going to have a run, Danny? No, I've got nothing of the young age, Paul. <laughs> Most of mine are all the older horses, but I must start to get into some either breeding or buying a yearling and, and having a crack. I love to win a gold crown as a trainer and, and it would be great just to have a runner in, runner in there. I had runners in there years and years ago when it first started, but um, yeah, certainly um, certainly something that um, you know I've always enjoyed and uh, not just as, as a work experience, but also just the racing side of it and just the yeah, just the atmosphere on the night is just so good. You know, it's incredible. Yeah. 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 And you got my favourite nights of the, yeah, the, the great. calendar, the, the and you got gold crown night. Your grand final night, you got Fred coming to town, you got the press conference organised and the, <laughs> the red the, carpet uh, rolled out. Oh, oh, turn carpet. it up, turn it up. <laughs> Are the roosters playing that night? Oh, I, I hope not because it's very hard calling a gold crown meeting with one eye on the track and one eye on the we'll, telly, Danny. We'll, we'll check the NRL schedule, Danny. If there's a late cancellation, you'll know why. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll be there, mate. I'll be there. I wouldn't miss gold crown final night for the world. As a, as a South man, Danny, and... Um, and uh, Roosters, man, I'm surprised you two are talking this week. Oh, I know, I know. This is, this is the forced communication I've put on you, isn't it? <laughs> That's all right. We're, we're both one and one for the season, so uh, one of us will be ahead of the other on the ladder after this Thursday. Uh, uh, again, hard watching the footy on Thursday when uh, when Penrith's on. But anyway, I'll get through. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mate, it's all gearing up for a great carnival. Can't wait to can't wait to you know, get there myself and experience it, um, Fred. Fred's super excited, as he should be. You know, he's, he's going to put the soundtrack down to a great night of racing on your grand final night. If, any, if last year's anything to go by, it's going to be a great night of racing. Remember Ricky Elchin mm. come out and just, just had, well, one that we kind of expected might win. I think it was at Tardelli. Tardelli. Really Tardelli. upset. That, or was it yeah. Soho Rhapsody? Oh, Soho Rhapsody. One of them yeah, really yeah. upset. Well, was well Soho was yeah. much, much bigger odds. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and Tardelli was kind of expected yep. to win. So, you can yeah. probably expect Ricky's going to play up. A solid hand in this year's uh, Gold Crown Carnival too. I would have thought, given some of the some of the two year olds he's had coming through. Yeah, he has quality each year, and he has quite a large stock of two year olds. So I'd have no surprise that he'd be heading up to Bathurst for the carnival and ready to take aim. Luxa Turner, yeah, Luxa Turner, Luxa Turner, and so, so her Spectra, I think yep, as well. Both very yep. nice. Yeah, I'd imagine that uh, the hopes are that there might be some local champions uh, crowned for there, Danny. Yeah, that certainly. Paul, it's, uh, there's been a lot. I, I think there's been a lot more horses, uh, two-year-olds trialling and, and obviously qualifying in the last month or so. I think we had trials last night, and, and not all these are competing in the crown. Obviously, but there's, I think we qualified 15 or 16 wow. horses there again last night. So the, the horse population is very strong at the moment, particularly around the two-year-olds. Is that so. reflected in the sales from last year, Danny, and and and, and the, the like the amount of two-year-old stock that you've got in the local area? Yeah, definitely, Fred. I think it's. Uh, the one thing about the sale is everyone buys a yearling with the intention of having something starting in the mm -hmm. gold crown. You know, that's always their motivation to you know, buy one and 
obviously it's got to be eligible. To be in the sale, it has to be eligible for the gold crown as well. So every yearling that goes through that sale is eligible for the gold crown. So I think it's always in the back of people's minds and everything is in their training is just to have that horse ready, uh, ready to trial in, in probably early to mid-January and, and then have them ready for the crown. And I think that's, you know, you know been the case this year with Steve and Bernie having a lot of two-year-olds trialling and, and obviously we're seeing that now when the fields have been released they've got a lot of runners. So uh, yeah, there'll be a lot of interest there. Not just around those two stables, but a lot around the locally trained runners as well. So, you know, it's all in all, it's pretty exciting. Fantastic. All right, mate. Well, we wish you the best of luck for tomorrow night uh, to kick it all off. And, you know, that's just the starting point of a wonderful two weeks of racing uh, there at Bathurst, as it always is. You know, you always put on great racing there, but this is really a, a great sort of fortnight for the club and uh, wish you the best of luck and uh, good luck with the lack of sleep, mate, to you and your team. <laughs> That's right. It's like watching South play every night. So, um. <laughs> All right, mate. Good luck. Okay, thanks for having us. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. He's one of the nicest South Sydney supporters I know, Danny Dwyer. There you go. How about that? Um, they put on a great show. Can't they wait do. to see it, see it unfold. Uh, 12 races tomorrow night. That's a lot of fantasy points to go around, Jess. A, a lot. So make sure you get your teams in by 1 o'clock this afternoon yes. and hopefully you've got some strong Western District influence in there. Yeah. Oh, you've got to put Ber- Bernie's, Bernie's Bernie a If he's you not in your to. team, you're not he's trying. Got go he's got to go in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then next week, of course, there's the, the double double points and triple mm. points. There's four races with, so it really does. If, you, if you're playing fantasy harness racing and if you're not, give yourself an uppercut. <laughs> Should be. Um, there's a lot of points on offer. The Western region really does come to the fore for these t- these two weeks, and as we said, you know, we there's a huge local presence there. This, it's not like it's, you know, all the metro metro drivers that we've allocated for the game are all coming to town, or the interstates are coming to town and they're going to take all take all the the spoils. There, there's a huge local presence and huge local hopes. Yeah, you know, they're, they're going to be really prominent, Fred. Oh, absolutely, and, and you'd expect that at, at this time of year. At that carnival, it's yeah. always uh, there's always a deal of prominence with the, the locals, and there's something special. Um, I can remember. I just I'm just trying to think how many years ago it was. Now uh, they were they hit, were hit with a, a blackout. Uh, the the track was blacked out. They had a problem, and uh, I think it was Jason Gaffney might have got onto the tools and he's, they were having a function because they had a horse trained by Matty Rue uh, racing in one of the, the group ones, and. Jason and his team went down to where the generator was and they worked for, oh, look, and it was mass confusion because I walked past one of the, the, the chairman of stewards on the night and he said, oh, no, we're off, we're coming back tomorrow. And so I've gone up and I had to, because blacked out, I had to ring the studio and say, oh, no, we're, we're off, we're off, um, can you let the tab know, we're off, uh, we're coming back tomorrow. And then they, apparently Jason had said to the stewards, Give me 10 minutes, I reckon I can get it sorted. And lo and behold, the lights came back up within about five and the message was then conveyed to me, no, we're on, we're, we're racing. <laughs> so I then had to ring and say, no, we're d- don't abandon us, we're, we're back. <laughs> we're back now. It was a, it was a re- But the boys worked really hard a- and that was what it was about. They had a, a horse here. I think it was Call Me Queen Bee. I've just been trying to think, Call Me Queen Bee. And they had a massive entourage of people uh, to cheer the horse on in one of the functions. And, and that's what it's about. It's not just about the, the Turnbulls and the Hewitts. It's about some of the smaller stables that they get together, have a massive night. And uh, I- yeah, if not for that night, uh, the, the race meeting wouldn't have gone ahead and some hard work and some very diligent electrical work uh, got the job done. What you didn't see was Danny on a push bike. <laughs> creating <laughs> create <an> energy. Yeah. <laughs> People were shoulder to shoulder that night. I, I, I vividly recall being down, because I came out of the box, we're in darkness, so I've come down to where the parade ring is there at Bathurst, and you couldn't move. The cra- and they're all saying, well, what, what's happening? What are we doing? And uh, yeah, in the end, there was a bit of confusion, but some diligent work uh, by a team of sparkies that were there enjoying a night at the races. Luckily, they hadn't been on the Terps. It was only <laughs> early. Otherwise, who knows what would have happened. But the boys very diligently and very professionally got the meeting back on track. I'll never forget that night. It was because I think we ended up going back a couple of races and it, it was something like, I think the last race was well after 11 o'clock. But um, yeah. I think that was actually my first gold crown experience. And I can tell you what, it was still a fantastic night. Yeah, we know who's it responsible. Was... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pull the plug. I mean, don't let me back at that. <laughs> no, it should be good. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, make sure you tune in um, on Sky Racing if you can't be there mm. because it's going to be uh, a fantastic uh, fortnight of racing. All right. Um, 
seven races this afternoon. Eight. Seven or eight? What did we decide on? It's Saturday night we I have wrote eight. seven, but I think you... Today we Today's have seven. seven. Today's seven. Saturday's Today's seven. eight. Okay. I get confused with all this racing. Lucky I've got you two here to, to <laughs> help me out. Um, when we turned up here at Menangle about an hour ago, it was beautiful blue sky. Actually, we nearly did the show outside. And you guys said... The oh, voice of hot. reason, I said no. <laughs> you said it's a bit, you said it's a bit I hot. I said it was too hot yeah, out. We look outside and we can see a little bit of rain falling, but it'll be fine. Um, it's going to keep you cool up in the box, Freddie. That's uh, something that's like that. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And Jess, yeah. you might need a raincoat. Yeah, I've got the raincoat <laughs> in the car. I'll be heading <laughs> back there to grab yeah, it. Yeah, taking photos. But Martin will be you out there in the rain, yeah. Jess. It'll be fine. But um, yeah, some good racing this afternoon here at Menangle. Leeton's on tonight. Bathurst on Wednesday, as we just talked about with Danny. Tamworth and Penrith on Thursday. And then Friday, blockbuster Friday, fantasy Friday, I think Tommy Sudersky <laughs> called it yesterday because all three race meetings on Friday are part of the fantasy harness racing game. So the points are just going to be flying in thick and fast. We've got Wagga, Bathurst again, and Newcastle now. When we've talked about the game, we said Bathurst is really relevant. Well, there's another reason why. Two Bathurst meetings this week, mm -hmm. so not the Penrith meeting. Anyone who thought they were a bit clever and stuck in their uh, their metropolitan team, me. Um, <laughs> we, well, you've still got a bit of time we'll to address change. that. If you can address make that. Make no Penrith on Thursday night yeah. in the game, but Penrith is still going ahead, so of make course. sure you tune in for that. Um, Broken Hills back on on Saturday. We're back to Bathurst on Monday, so that club is just going to be, as I said to Danny, no sleep. Yeah, no. they, they <laughs> race five they, times in about yeah. eight days, nine days, and rowing all the extra and then events got the that other fill things, up all the, the other ball days, and the yeah. barrier it's draw, the golf day, yeah. corporates in there for yeah. dinner, and yeah, yeah. 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 And, and getting the getting the the premises up to yeah, so that it looks pristine because they do a great job. But the track staff, yeah, they it's the track's good to go. It's a great track there. They're yeah. a good club. They're all a bunch yep. of workers. Yep. Those that are involved there, you often see uh, committee members up there, you know, doing, you know, picking up glasses on those big nights and stuff like that. Uh, Mary Ann does a great job, and, and, and Amy and the team, and, and Danny, just a really good club. I, yeah, yep. yeah, love going there, involved. love going up there to Bathurst, and they're all a bunch of workers, and any success that they uh, enjoy through a carnival like this is well deserved yep, absolutely. and well earned. Absolutely. And then we're back at Menangle on Saturday. Saturday. Yep, yep. We've got a, a, an eight racer on Saturday. Good program. They've got heats of the uh, the autumn uh, championship, so that'll be, uh, that'll be good. Um, Heaven on high, bless him, uh, goes around in one of the heats. So uh, I think you've got to run one, two to be guaranteed a spot in the final because I think there are four heats, so probably the fastest uh, thirds. And Jess, another good race for the uh, for the fillies. Yeah, the Harness Breeders New South Wales Go Girlfriend Final. Of course, we saw heats conducted various tracks all across the state, and there's Riverina representation. There's Tamworth representation. Uh, what representation was there? Hashtag Riverina That's for better, all. Better. <laughs> Very good pick up there, Fred. Metropolitan Bathurst. There's plenty of horses mm. in, it and it looks a really exciting race on paper. Did you say that right though? The Go Girlfriend. Did you say it right? Is it go go friend? Is it? I thought that's how you kids were. <laughs> you kids. You kids. You, you kids say it. Okay. <laughs> Us old you people, we just yeah. say it's the you know, go girlfriend. You know, that just sounded like something so that you know, the old people would Freddie, say. So <laughs> you know how we're constantly referencing songs that Jess yeah. has got zero idea about. Yesterday, yeah. I referenced so that the, the guy who won best supporting actor at the Oscars was in Indiana Jones. Yes. Yes. I've got Tommy in doing the podcast. I said, oh, the you know. I think his name was Data or something like that in the in Indiana Jones. I see Data from Indiana Jones. He goes, "What are you talking about? Never heard of Indiana Jones." Oh, and I thought, "No, I've got a Harrison stop. Ford. I know Harrison oh, Ford. Oh, well, there you go. But That's I good. Didn't, Han Solo. can't recall I, much from the movie. I've got to stop referencing pop culture around <laughs> you, you next generation because you're." You're ageing me in a hurry. <laughs> well, I, I get it, but I don't want to admit that I get it because then I'm, a, I, I'm aged even more because I'm older than you. So I'll just nod my head and smile. So I, I thought Indiana Jones yeah. was safe territory. Yeah, I would have thought so. You know. It's about how many movies are there? I about 15 or something? Oh, I only yeah. know Harrison Ford because of Air Force One. I, oh, hope, that's okay. right. I hope that's Get off right. my plane. Right. Yeah, yeah, no. What about right. Star Wars? Yeah, not a Star Wars fan at but all. But you know what Star you know Star I know Wars what it is. He was in Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In, in, the, in the, well, the first three movies that were made, which were episodes four, five, and six, how to confuse people. Like, you bring out a movie in 1976 <laughs> called Star Wars, but it's actually the fourth in the, the, fourth. In the series. Anyway. The sequel, the sequel before the prequel. Se or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pre <laughs> prequel <laughs> sequels or something. That. He had a good mate, Chewbacca. <laughs> you don't no, know Chewbacca? No idea. No, no. no. no idea. Uh, Next time you go in and order a Chewbacca, ask for that. Yeah. It's just a little, little 
A, a little little gag, little, little cafe gag, yeah. dead joke. Uh, um, <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. So the racing is uh, is going to be really good uh, over the next seven days. Oh, we got through that little pop culture <laughs> pop culture stroll down just there. Just still scratching our head for <laughs> those watching on the <laughs> to come up on the live a, stream. Just as shaking. They come up with friend. a saver there at the end to try and get this thing back on track. Yeah, um, yeah. Black Bookers. Speaking of getting things back on track, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine from last week still hasn't raced, so technically I haven't gone off track yet, but. Um, my black booker for this week went around at Bathurst last Wednesday night. Dara Bont for Matt Rue and Matty Young. Thought it was really impressive hitting the line after hitting five fence and then was forced really wide and still hit the line strongly. So Dara Bont for me. Okay. And just on that theme, mine hasn't raced, which was Porter Prince from last week. So uh, we've got our powder dry there. But I was really impressed with a horse called Clement Sorrell uh, lining up for yet another race at uh, at uh, Goulburn yesterday was sitting behind Porsche's Bling who led Porsche's Bling dropped right out at about the five six hundred and tailed off but it took Clement Sorrell back through the field Cam Hart had to come via the Cape to get into the race and it charged home and ran third getting on in years um, but a real trier and I reckon uh, he'll pop up at Penrith sometime soon, uh, if not Penrith. Bankstown have got a meeting coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, he might be one to watch. Clement Sorrell. All right, keep an eye out for them. Um, guys, a little bit of sad news. Um, gone up on the on the socials on Harness Racing New South Wales socials this morning. Um, our, our condolences go to the family of Phil Frost, former senior steward. Spent nearly 50 years in the game. Like, yeah, great service. Participant. And, and, yeah. So our thoughts go out to... to uh, you know the family of Phil Frost. You know uh, it's it's just horrible when we when we lose people who who have been part of the fabric of our of our harness racing community. They've dedicated yeah he's dedicated his service. life to the sport mm-hmm. yeah. through the service to the sport. So uh, yeah, condolences to uh, to the family. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Um, hey, happy birthday, Colin Watts. Ninety six. Yeah. He's going to be on track today. We've got a race named after him. Ninety six today. He does, and Colin Bromack goes around in that yep. race. So he's hoping it can salute for Colin. It, Happy birthday, a wonderful gentleman. Nature's gentleman he is, he really is, Jess. Yeah. You know him yeah. very well, obviously. Yeah, from, from the Fairfield days. Fairfield was a favourite track of mine and Colin was a staple there. I think he was president on the board and just such a strong association in harness racing and around that Fairfield area. So it'd be great to see Colin Bromack get I'm up today. I'm going to try and catch up with him, Mum. Was tempted to eat a cake, 96 candles, but I had to <laughs> alert the real fire. Well, the rain had put them out, so we, yeah, he's safe, I think. That type of setup, Training. 96, is, uh, yeah, that's, wow. that's a good knock, isn't well, that's it? That's a good so, knock, and he's yeah. a lovely, lovely man. Absolutely. How's Team Teal going? Team Teal's going really well. I know here at Menangle, this is our final meeting for the Teal Pants for the 2023 campaign, and we're up to 6,600 thus yep. far. So hopefully today the girls can bring it home. There's eight race, uh, seven races left to go, so... Hopefully we can get a few more winners before the campaign's over. Yeah, we'll get an up. We'll get a full update on on Team Teal next week because we should be able to have that all wrapped all up statewide. So biggest yeah, it's just such yeah. a such a great initiative, um, guys. We we it's great to have Danny on the show because that's going to be so so good that Bathurst Carnival. It's going to be incredible. Of course, we see those juveniles take centre stage there, but there's plenty of racing as well there. He mentioned the honoree heats and finals too, so can't wait for that and can't wait to see some of the social events that happen on that covered on their socials. Going to go and have a hit, game of golf. Yeah, no, not a golfer. No, not a golfer. No, still, still, I, I, still I, well clear. Yeah, I, I just love the uncertainty that the two-year-old racing brings. Uh, and there's hopes and there's dreams. There are people that bought horses um, that, that their dream is to run in a in a gold crown final or a tiara final, um, and they're at that point now. Their their dream is at, about to either yeah. be realised yep. or dashed. Yep. Um, and it's that glorious uncertainty that racing provides us all with the the fact that. You know, there's going to be some very happy connections and there there might be some disappointed connections. But either way, they'll live to fight another day and there's other races uh, in store for them. But it's just that that when they're debutantes and you you just can't wait for them to hit the track, it's a pretty exciting night. Well, it can happen so quick too, can't it? You know, we had Nathan Turnbull on the show last week and he, he talked about just the journey that Better Be The Best has taken on mine and it's happened so quick. Like It's yeah. been 
in 18 months or so. He's been well managed, that horse, Jess. He has, and speaking of better be the best, he was purchased from the Bathurst Gold Crown yearling sale, and that happens again this Sunday. So head to Bathurst, there's still a chance to find your next champion. Well, he made the final last year, better be the best, and then, you know, you fast forward 12 months, and he's he's picking up, you know, group one, you know, so Derby winner and uh, a a group one last year as well. So, um, yep, you've got to be in it to win it. Don't forget the sales Sunday. Absolutely. Well, everyone, um, thanks for your time tuning into our podcast. We love doing it each week. If you can, give us a like, share, follow, subscribe, whatever that buzzword is that pops up on your chosen podcast app. Uh, we, we, we would be super appreciative of that. If you're watching on the live stream, uh, we love you tuning in each week. We'll see a few comments there. Someone spammed us about trying to sell us some Bitcoin along the way. So oh, you know, should, We should pass <laughs> the hat around. We might be going. able to get enough to buy one on Sunday. We're going, hey. good thing. Can, we buy, can, what's <laughs> can we go to the yearling sales with some Bitcoin? Bitcoin? Yeah. Yeah. Accept Actually, that? I saw a number pop up. While we are talking to Danny, you guys probably heard the beep beep yes, on my did. phone. Someone's yes. trying to sell me a cheap electricity deal out oh, of Melbourne excellent. or something. Oh, oh, those okay, numbers yeah, that yeah, I, I keep yeah. seeing regularly. Block. Um, Block. Yep. <laughs> One of the perils of having your health cover with the Medicare group. So yeah, <laughs> yes. Medi-ba- Medibank group, sorry, uh, in recent times. So, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to us. Um, enjoy the racing. It's everywhere. Can't wait. Sky Racing's Bring where you'll on. find it. So uh, we'll catch you next week on the Sprint Lane. Bye-bye. Bye.